Hello, I am Satan Deville. And uh, when I'm uh, on Earth here, I always tune in to the Archie Luxury Channel. Archie Luxury Channel. I always like to see what that buffoon is doing from the whist, whist, whist watch. Check. I like to see what that buffoon is doing. And when I'm on Earth, I always enjoy the Archie Luxury Channel. I'm Satan Deville. Hi guys, Paul Pluto, Paul Pluto Channel. Today guys, I'm doing paid reviews. Paid reviews, this is paid review AP2. And before I start this paid review for Eli, let's do a quick whist, whist watch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing a Frank Muller. Frank Muller. Frank Muller, Al and This is a very famous UAE football team. I'm wearing the Frank Muller today because, because, why not? Why not wear the Frank Muller? Okay, this is a special review for Eli. Hey Archie, I'm Eli and I'm a musician and a music teacher. I've sent you $30 PayPal donation for your review. I've given him a discount because he's a, he's a struggling teacher. I work long hours and have a variety of watches to fit the many situations I found myself in. I'm looking at my collection. Please bear in mind that I'm 5 feet 4 inches and I'm only about 110 pounds. I have extremely small wrists and find that anything over 40 mil is uncomfortable and doesn't, and doesn't look good on me at all. On the flip side, I can wear watches as small as 32 and easily get away with it. My current collection contains a Rolex Explorer 2 for daily wear. I got this piece from an old family friend that bought it new back in the day from the AD and I only paid 3000 for the piece. I absolutely love it. My second piece is a mid-size 36mm Omega Seamaster. This one fits me really well and I love the bracelet. I bought it on the grey market in mint condition for two grand. My third piece is a Hoya tribute to to 1963 chrono i'm not big on hoya tag hoya watches but love the vintage hoya chronos i love the speedy but i wore it for a couple of days once and it didn't just didn't suit my wrist and i didn't want to go for the reduced i paid 1800 for this used my final watch is a quartz mont blanc minder mines meister struck uh, it's not my taste or anything I'd ever go for, but it was a gift from my uncle uh, I'm extremely close with. It also got me started in the hobby. When thinking about where I should go next, I really like the old 34mm Rolex Air King or an older Rolex President on a gold bracelet. Another possibility is taking the leap and picking up something from the Holy Trinity like the Calatrava a 5035 annual calendar or even a 33mm or 36mm Royal Oak. Please let me know your thoughts on my collection and I'd love to hear recommendations on where I can go next. I've attached pictures of my collection. I love your channel and content. Keep up the great work. Keep up the great work. Um, this is from Eli. Okie dokie Eli, let's, uh, let's have a bit of a discussion here. So at the moment Eli uh, I got to tell you, I quite like the collection there. I think the Rolex Explorer 2, you've got a black dial 40mm, that's a beautiful watch. Mid-size Seamaster, that is a 36mm. Is that, you know, that 36mm Seamaster didn't really used to be mid-size, but I suppose you could say that now. you got the 1963 Hoya, that is a very, very cool wristwatch. And you've got a Mont Blanc, a Mont Blanc. Okay, look, I'm I'm not a fan of Mont Blanc. I, I had a bit of a run in many many years ago. I was um, I this was before my YouTube fame uh, kicked ass. I was uh, how would I say? I was trying to start a business selling watches to secondhand to pawn shops, to secondhand sort of dealers. And I remember there was one guy there I dealt with. Uh, Aaron his name was and and uh, he wore Mont Blanc and I tried to talk him into Rolex and I, I, I wasn't you know I wasn't trying to sell him or 
watch. Or, well, I was, but I, I, you know, there wasn't. It's not about the money. I was just trying to get him liking Rolex, and he lent it for a weekend and put a massive fucking scratch in it, and then returned it. And I thought, fuck, this business is shit. This business is fucking shit. That's what I honestly uh, thought there. So it's it's one of those things. It's kind of uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of those one of those fucking things that Mont Blanc people are cunts. They're cunts, and that's why I hate the brand. So. I, I, I hate Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc is known for their pens, expensive pens, which they, they I think they do a good job at. You know, why did they go into wristwatches? Because there's money in it. You know, it's kind of cheesy and it's just so artificial. It's artificial. That's exactly what it is. Um, I mean, what did Mont Blanc do? They bought a second-rate watchmaker. Uh, Minerva, what is it? Minerva, Minerva. They bought a second-rate watchmaker. I mean, they're just a bunch of cunts, bunch of cunts. But let's look at your collection. Ignore the Mont Blanc. You got the Rolex Explorer Two. You got a, a Seamaster, and you got a Hoya. Okay, okay. Now look, 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 Eli. Let's not blow smoke up your fucking ass. You fucking asked me for a discount. You asked me for a discount. You can't ask me for it. It's uncool to ask for a discount and then talk about buying a President or a 5035. You need real coin for that, Eli. Um, come on, man. Get with the program. I don't know what dope you're smoking, man, but fuck me dead. A President... And a annual calendar Patek are fucking expensive. They are fucking expensive. So, <laughs> Eli, you can live in denial all you want. You don't have the money for it. Unless you stiff me $20 for the sake of it. I mean, that's, that's just a cunt act, if that's the case. Eli, 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 come on, man. Work with me, not against me. There's nothing wrong with being poor. I am quite poor myself. Uh, I've had to nickel and dime. I've had to... Uh, my, my, one of my good friends talking to another friend said I'm a cunt to deal with. Well, that's what I've had to do. I don't think you're a musician. You're not cunty enough to make that call, okay? So my opinion for you is there's many good watches in the smaller range that would be beautiful for you. Okay, so let's not get, you know, big heads here and say, I want to get a present. Look, Eli, you're fucking short of loot, man. You're short of loot. So what would I get if I was you? Okay, okay. So let's let's back the truck up. Let's talk what would you get. I think a great watch for you would be a 36 mil Rolex Datejust, like a 16234 early 90s, no holes case, that's a beautiful watch, I'm going to write this down here, Eli, I'm not using a Mont Blanc, I'm using a Parker Duofol, because I find that to be a nicer pen, I had most of my Mont Blanc pens were fucking awful to write with, so so I, I, I think a, a Rolex 16234, no holes case, that's a little bit nicer. I think I think that suits that watch. I reckon that's a great watch to get. Uh, I think another great watch to get would be a Zenith. That's right, a Zenith El Primero. Uh, exactly like I've got the 42 mil, but they did it in 38 mil. Okay, so 38 mil for a sports chrono. I reckon that could be a really good size watch to get. I tell you another beautiful watch that I would seriously get consider if I were you and that is a Breguet Breguet Type 20. Now the Breguet Type 20 the big problem with it is is that some people think it is a wee bit small. 
See, it is, it's using 21 mil lug width, which makes it feel a bit bigger, but it's actually a 3839 mil watch, 3839 mil. So it's under 40. So I think that would be a beautiful watch to get. Look, let's be honest, Eli, you're a fucking music teacher. Okay, you're a music teacher, you're a musician, and music, you're not fucking, you're not fucking raking in the big bucks. Music is a hard gig. It's like making YouTube videos. It's fucking tough. It's, you're not going to be rake, raking in the big bucks. So you've got to be realistic. Um, I, I quite like your collection. I like it. I think the Explorer 2, very good. The Seamaster, very good. And the Hoya, the ta the so the 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 Explorer Two yes, the Seamaster yes, the Hoya yes, the Mont Blanc I hate fucking Mont Blanc, I hate Mont Blanc. That's just just how it it goes there. Uh, interestingly enough, the guy who fucked up the Rolex I lent him it was an Explorer Two black dial. Just 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 out of just pure irony. Uh, anyway, I got it fixed and I I sold it and it just fucking created a lot of trouble now let's be completely frank and honest with you there i think um a speedy would be good okay so the the speedmaster man on the fucking moon it's 42 mils but what about the first omega in space the first omega in space it's actually the original Speedmaster size, which is under 40 mils. So I think there's many ways you should grow your collection. I would probably say the next piece I would buy would be a Rolex Datejust 16234. 16234 is a steel Datejust. It has the white gold fluted bezel. You can get it mainly, they mainly, you'll get those mainly on Jubilees. Okay, that's, that's so I reckon that would be a, beautiful piece to add then i'd probably add i reckon the zenith el primero or the breguet whatever one took your fancy they're actually quite soft both of those watches are pretty soft in the marketplace they shoot way above their weight i mean the zenith el primero was the first integrated automatic chrono 1969 it came out <clears throat> I think they're beautiful. Just get that. Uh, or the Breguet. The Breguet's, you know, you're getting into a beautiful piece. Because let's face it, Eli, you're not making the big bucks. A president, I think a 36 mil president would be very good. But come on, you're a musician for fuck's sake. And a, a 5035, 5035's big money. Big money, big money, big money. You're not, or a, the Royal Oaks, the 33... Or the 36 okay that's that's a fair comment there what do I think of that the 33 well I've actually owned a 33 and a 36 Royal Oak they're getting a bit old okay uh, the 33 mil would be the quartz I've owned it the problem is when the quartz movement fucks up I mean a quartz movement it's it's electronics it's components it's got a life of about 20 to 30 years then they start to fuck up. It's a circuitry. It's circuitry. So I, you're in for expensive repair. The 36 mil, you could get a 14790 ST. That was the uh, the Royal Oak I had. Nice. I think the 36 mil is actually a quite a nice size. Very delicate and finicky. Uh, and you're going to pay big money. They're not cheap now. They've fucking gone through the roof. Uh, I reckon you're much better off to get a Breguet and a Zenith. That I, I'd, I'd, I'd rather do that. So, um, what do I think of the collection? I like it. I like it indeed. But, man, if you're going to ask for a fucking discount on the review, you can't be talking about buying a President or an annual calendar. I mean, fuck me dead. Fuck me dead, Eli. That's just poor form. Uh... But uh, I, I quite like it. I, I like the collection. They're nice watches. I like that, I like that 1963 Carrera, actually. I, I, I fucking really like that. I think for a smaller size, that is a beautiful piece. Uh, so, so, Eli, that's where I would go. 
that's where I would go. Uh, you're a very lucky guy. You got the the uh, the Rolex for three grand. Fuck, that's um, that's pretty damn good. So um, I I think you're a lucky fucker. That's for sure. So um, yeah, I think that's a nice collection. Wear it in good health, and uh, there's some suggestions to grow it. Um, add Rolex Backbone is very good. That's that's that, that's exactly how I'd stick to the the iconic, beautiful. I I think that's that's where I'd go. Rolex Datejust, Amiga First Amiga in space, a Zenith El Primero, and a Breguet Type Twenty. That's where I would push the collection. I'm Paul Prudle. This has been a paid review. Remember, guys, my fee is fifty US dollars. If, however, you're on the bones of your ass or money's very, very tight and you do want a discount, email me, tell me your sob story, and I'll see what I can do. Because I don't want to be a cunt. I don't want to be a nasty, nasty cunt. I, I like to try and help people uh, come on board. I'm Paul Pluto. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Hi guys, Paul Pluter, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III. Guys, I want to tell you this is so important. Guys, I depend on my Patreon supporters. Just this week, I used my Patreon funds to get myself a fantastic, lightweight, gimbal travel camera. And I just want to say thank you. This was made possible because of my Patreons. The Patreons, they made this purchase possible. And it's, you know, pieces of equipment like this is $600, plus I need a few memory cards. It's such an expensive business. Guys, if you haven't sponsored me on Patreon, please do so. Look in the description for this video here. It'll tell you ways you can help me. <coughs> Guys, help me stay full-time on YouTube making videos by Helping me on Patreon, you send a small amount each month to me to keep me enthused and making videos. I can buy equipment like this little gimbal camera. Guys, come on. Help me. Help me a lot. Help me. Help me very much so. Because, guys, I, wanna, I want your help. I need help to make quality content. And i got to be honest with you. If I didn't have your help... It's not going to be much good, guys. It's not going to be much good. I need your help to buy equipment and to, uh, to do things. So, guys, sponsor me on Patreon, and I'll be here for you. That's right. I'll be here for you. Please, guys, help me on Patreon. See you later. Hey, guys, Archie Luxury. Pick a box, pick a box, pick a box, pick a box. What does your wristwatch box say about you? Let's have a look here. What do we got? Pick a box, pick a box, pick a box, pick a box, pick a box. Which one would you choose? Would you choose the big wooden boxes, the blue box, the green, or a red box, or a fancy box? Which box would you pick? Pick a box, pick a box, pick a box. Pick a box, fuckers. Which box would you pick?